Hey developers, so today I'm going to show you some tips and tricks that you can use starting today in Chrome, VS Code, and in Vue, which will make you a faster and better developer. Okay, so I've been hearing a lot of talk lately about developer ergonomics, which is a term that just means that we're trying to get developers to be more productive and write better code. So I've been thinking about like, what are some neat things that you can do, some small things you can do today to be a little bit more productive. And so that's what this video is all about. Hey, and if you're new to this channel, my name is Eric. I'm a big fun software developer guy that loves Vue.js, React, JavaScript. If you guys like those type of topics, make sure you click the like button, subscribe, and also a quick note that I do have a, a, a free cheat sheet for Vue.js. If you click in the description below, I have a link to it. Go ahead and click on it and you can check that out. All right, so let's just go ahead and jump into the code and take a look. Okay, so here is the first tip. Now, these tips are, are very small. They're really easy to implement. And this is something I've been thinking about. So I've seen more and more people doing this. If you've watched some live cast and people have their VS Code open, you can notice here that most by default, VS Code puts this panel, this, this uh, panel on the left-hand side but you can move the sidebar from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. And by the way, there is Control-B to open and close it. So, but why would you wanna do that? So right here, when it's on the left-hand side, take a look what happens when you see the code. You see how the code moves every time you open and close the panel? Well, that can be maybe a little bit annoying for some people. So what you can do is right-click on the sidebar when it's open, and then choose Move Sidebar to the right and now when you click on it, the code doesn't actually just move a bunch every time you open and close it. And if you're anything like me, I'm always like opening up files, closing the sidebar, doing things, opening another file, opening the sidebar again. And just like that little bit of non-movement can, uh, can be a little bit nicer. So yeah, you can see here my head's in the way, but you can see definitely, you know, a little bit nicer. So that would be my first tip today. Maybe when you're using VS Code, try switching it to the other side and see how you like it for a couple of weeks and see if you uh, if you think it's better. And leave a comment below too if you do. All right, so my second tip is cursor. So if you see here on the screen, I have my cursor. And normally by default, it's set to blinking. But if you go and open up uh, the settings, so I'm gonna open it up in the UI and type in cursor. And by the way, to do that, I did um, on a Windows PC, I did Control Shift P, I believe it's like Command Shift P on a Mac. You'll, um, you can then search for settings in your VS Code. And there's this editor cursor blinking right here. And it's usually blinking. So this is kind of the default. You can see here it's blinking on the screen. But I, I, one I really like is phase. So if you look at phase, it kind of phases in and phases out. I don't know, I think it looks a little bit better. So, I mean, this would be a nice little tip depending on, on what you uh, like. You may like this phase a little bit better. I don't know, I kind of like it. I like, since I do a lot of screencasts, I like leaving it solid. That way, if I'm doing cutting or editing of the video, you don't see the cursor jumping everywhere. There's also, I think you can turn it off completely. Oh, there's expand too. So I don't like that. You may see some people put this on there uh, when you watch codes on, people writing code on, on YouTube with this expand. But I, I think phase, or blink is good. Here's smooth. You can see it's a little smoother. I think phase looks probably the best if I had to say, if I wasn't going to leave it on solid. So, you know, let me know if what you guys like the best. I think this is kind of a neat little feature, just a little something maybe doesn't really help you with productivity, but I think it's a nice little feature that helps when you're staring at this code editor for eight hours a day. Okay. So the next trick I'm going to show you is a VS code one. There's a couple of here that are interesting. So first I went ahead and just loaded a website up, just a random website, in this case, cssstricks.com. And as you guys probably all know, there, if you right click, you go to inspect. Now, depending on what you like, I know a lot of people like putting this on the right hand side, some putting, putting it on the bottom. I like it on the bottom. You just click this little um, three buttons here and then you can move it down. But that's not the trick I was gonna mention. So first, if you can click on any block, you can click this little arrow here and click on any block, you can then right click on it and then click store as a global variable, which is kind of neat. So you can kind of take any block of text in any website, look it up in inspector, store it as plain text, and now you have it or store it as a variable. And now you have it and you can manipulate it however you want. Um, if I wanted to 
uh, you know, at a at some on focus or events, or if I just want to take a look at what's in it. Uh, so that's kind of a nice thing. And let me see if I can make this a little bigger for you to see. Yeah, that's a little better. So yeah, here's the the variable. Another nice thing I like to do is once I kind of pull something out of website, I like to copy it into somewhere. And instead of like trying to copy and paste it from here, like just you know just trying to get my cursor to copy is not always easy. A nice nice little trick, and I believe this works in both Windows and in in all versions of Chrome, is you just do copy, and then you put in the variable and you hit enter, and now it's going to copy it into your uh, basically your your copy and paste on your computer itself. So if I open up, let's say I open up Notepad and I paste, so here is the whole text that I wanted. Uh, that was from what I copied. So you can do this anywhere. Anytime you have something outputted to the console, you can copy it. And it just makes a nice little way of grabbing information and pa pasting it somewhere. And it just adds it to the clipboard is the word I'm thinking of. So in like Windows, it adds it to the clipboard so you can paste it anywhere. And you can do this in Mac too. So remember that copy command. Another really nice one is, I, I think we've all done this before as web developers. We've wanted, to, we'd kind of like do some inline editing while we're working. So maybe I will move this to the side window to them see here. So here's the CSS and we might be like, okay, well this paragraph here, I'm gonna see what it looks like if we do font size, font fan, let's see, font size, uh, 32 pixels. Oh, okay, that looks okay. And at the end of it, you might like, I don't know, I wanna add a background color. So you do background and you might do Alice blue or okay, okay, I can see here it is different background colors to see what it looks like. And then at the end, when you're done, you're like, oh, now I need to like put this in my real style sheet. So you might end up like copying and pasting and it's kind of a pain. And then what happens if you edit like multiple parts here, then you have to click on each one of them and look at the element dot style. And it's not always the easiest thing to do. So a better way of doing this is, and there's a few ways, and let me know in the comments if you know another way, is to click this little plus button here and add a new style rule. And this will give you the inspector style sheet. So now I can do the same thing I did above. I can add my background blue, uh, if I can type right blue, and I can you know add my font size, you know 32 pixels, and then I can go into something else. Let's say um, if I go into here, I can hit this plus again, and I have another style sheet here, and I can do uh, font size uh, 22 pixels on whatever I'm looking there. And so now if I click on this inspector style sheet, uh, here are the changes I've made in both the paragraph and the anchor tag that I just did. So now I have a very easy way of copying and pasting my changes into my own style sheet, into my own VS code, instead of having to like look everywhere and hunting and pecking and figure out where I made changes. Now it's all in one place. So this just makes it a little bit simpler and a little bit easier and something I would highly recommend if you like to work in the browser like I do to make changes and then go back into my code editor and, and add them in. Okay, I, uh, so here is another tip that I have for a view app that is. So I'm, I'm back in my VS Code editor here and one thing that I see a lot in view in the view world is we often have to make changes to both our template and to our style. And as you can notice in this, as we get larger and larger uh, single file components, this will get quite big and scrolling all the way up to the top and then scrolling all the way down will become uh, quite a nuisance after a while. So a quick pro tip, if you're if you are working with a single file component and it does get quite large is to go into your scripts right here and and then highlight it all and then just move it up move it to the top above your template because really Vue does not care if the script tag is at the top or at the bottom wherever it is and now you can work your data at the top and then you can work on your template and then your styles are right underneath it so just just a quick tip, if you, it gets a little bit, it takes a little bit of time to get used to. I'm always used to having the template and then the script tag and then the style tag, but having it this order actually kind of makes more sense. And I believe uh, you can set this up uh, with your different snippets to, to do this as well. Uh, I use a Sarah Drasner's snippet plugin in VS Code. In this, uh, you just search for 
uh, view snippets and hers will come up. So I, I use that one and I believe one of the snippets is actually to create your single file components this way. And just keep this type of, type of pattern I think makes sense. Uh, one thing obviously you wanna do is to be consistent. So if you start doing this in your files, make sure you do it in every file from then on so that way, you know, developers who jump into your view does uh, view files don't get confused on where things are at. Yeah, so I think this just makes more sense. Okay, let's talk about uh, another way of doing this. So uh, I'm gonna close up CSS tricks here, but here is this app. I actually created this in my previous video. It's talking about uh, using the AWS Amplify UI admin. By the way, if you haven't seen that video, I just did it earlier this week. I'll make sure I put a link in the description. It's a pretty cool way of creating a backend visually while uh, not having to worry about the nitty gritty of that. So here I am in this app that I created. And typically uh, what I recommend for people is if you don't wanna kind of pollute your, your global CSS space and don't have to worry about um, CSS names clashing or changing things is you would usually add style scopes. You can make basically make your style scope for the component they're in. So let's say here, by the way, this comes with app. I'm gonna, I'm gonna change it. Um, I'm gonna do a dot app here to, for a class. I'm just gonna add this to the hello world and we're gonna just add an app there. So if I do that, it went ahead and changed it and you can see the styles changed on our screen here. This is a very basic app. Now, if I look here, I believe you can see it. Let me see if, yep, you should be able to see it here. Uh, I have, you can see this data attribute here it says div ID app and here's a H and it has added this data dash V and this like hash afterwards. And you could see here, it added this style tag with the data, uh, with the data brackets in it. And that's okay. But I know some people think this is kind of weird that now we have this class equals app and we have this weird data attribute in here. And now we have this data attribute here and I guess possibly you could still get conflicts later on if you're using different data attributes and maybe even difficult to search because if you have multiple apps somewhere, now you have to kind of look at this, this data attribute. So one way, and I know this isn't the perfect way to do it. Uh, I know I've seen people advocate that this is a better way, but maybe you should try it out and see if you like it, is instead of using scoped here, is use the CSS module. And so you do style module here, and then instead of doing class app, you do style.app and then you uh, bind it basically. So if we save it like that, it has the same output, but look, it's a little bit different now. Now our class name is actual real class name and where the CSS for it uses the class name here. So it added like this underscore app. It has first the app is, I guess the name of the app and then the CSS, the, the CSS uh, class name and then like this hash after it, but we're not doing the brackets. We're not doing that weird, uh, the, well, it's just another way to specify that element, but we're not using that data element to do it. So I think this way is a little bit maybe cleaner for some projects, as long as everybody is, gets used to binding their styles like this. Uh, and you can even, um, you can even do like, uh, you can even create like an exports file and do all sorts of like styled exports so you can create something like this. If I wanted to have an export and I wanted to have some sort of property I wanted to share, like font size, this is not a real CSS property, but let's say I just did um, size F and I put 12 pixels in here. I can now access this 12 pixels by doing a, if I remember correctly, it's um, style and then uh, font F, is that what I called it? Or size F, excuse me, size F. This one up here, outside the, uh, so here's 12 pixels. So now this is kind of like a, a variable that we can use inside our app here because we're just grabbing it from the exports and then we can use this in like a style tag or if you wanna do inline styles, we can do uh, a style and then put you know font size, I guess we could do something like this. Font size and then colon and then we can do style size F. If I did that right. Let's see if that works. Okay, yeah, so I made it a little bit bigger. So if I change this to 
32. Yeah, so you can see I made it way bigger. Uh, so you can kind of do fun things like that too. Uh, I know I think this is a little bit cleaner, perhaps using CSS modules than using scoped. Uh, let me know your th your thoughts. I, I definitely see if you're in a huge, uh, a larger code base and you need to do quick searches, this might be the way to go. All right, so that's all my tips today. So moving the VS Code bar to the right, turn the cursor to uh, phase instead of blinking, uh, doing Chrome inspect on any item, adding it to temp, copying to the clipboard, creating in, uh, inspects sheets inside your inside your Chrome browser instead of trying to figure out where your, all your changes are, moving the script tag to the top of your view app and still having it in the middle, and then using CSS modules. So that's a quick overview of everything we learned today. Let me know if you disagree, agree with any of these things. Leave a comment below. I appreciate it. Thanks.